Okay, so the two or three examples that we've already covered have all have had solutions and nice solutions like two and five or one and three or one half and six halves something or seven halves, right? They've all had nice little answers. There are cases where you don't get an answer at all or you get what's called infinitely many solutions, okay? So we need to have some examples of what happens when, when that's the case and um, what do you do from there, right? Well, how do you answer the question? If it says solve a system and you're getting this weird stuff happening, what do you write, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna put this one in an augmented matrix and that would be two, negative three, seven, negative six, nine, and zero. And then we're gonna tack it just like we did before. So turn that guy to a one. So I'm gonna do one half times row one. And that's going to become one, negative three halves, seven halves. This guy staying the same. Then we're gonna to get this guy to be a zero. So we gotta use positive six times row one plus row two to give me my new row two. So that means six, negative nine, 21. And when we add, we get zero. We actually get a zero here and we get 21. Now, so I have this as row one and I have this as row two. Now the next step would be to turn this guy into a one. The only way we can turn something into a one is to multiply by the reciprocal. That's the only way. So if I were to take zero, which is a whole number, and whole numbers can be written as a fraction by placing it over one, if I wanted to take the reciprocal of that, it would be one over zero. However, you can never divide by zero. One over zero is undefined, which means the reciprocal does not exist. So how can you multiply by the reciprocal if there isn't a reciprocal of zero, right? You can't, it's impossible. So in this case, you can't go any further with the process. You're done, this is the end. Okay, as soon as you get a zero right there, you can't finish the problem any further than it already is. So what do you do? You change it back into its, into its equation form. So this becomes x minus three halves y equal to seven halves. This becomes no x's, no y's equal to 21. You have to have something on this side written down. And if there's nothing, what represents nothing numerically is a zero. Now notice that what you have here is that a statement that says zero equals 21. Zero does not equal 21. This is what we call a contradiction. It's a statement that is not true. It's called a contradiction. If you end up with this contradiction, what that tells you is that there is no solution to the system. These lines, the lines here, if I were to graph them, will never, ever, ever, ever cross, which is why I can't find a point or an answer, okay? Now, that's that situation. If you end up with the contradiction after getting this zero here, it's no solution. What happens if I don't get a contradiction there? You know, I still end up running into the same problem with that zero, but let's say I don't get a contradiction. What is the answer then, right? So let's try this problem. Put it into its augmented matrix. It would be two, five, negative seven, negative six, negative 15, 21. So again, change this guy to a one, do one half times row one. We get one five halves, negative seven halves. 
Row two is staying the same. <coughs> Excuse me. You need to turn this guy into a zero, so you need to turn that to a positive six. So positive six times row one plus row two gives me my new row two. So I get six, I get 15, and I get negative 21. And you can double check, multiply this by six in your calculator, multiply this by six in your calculator, but you should end up with these numbers. So when I add those, I get zero. When I add these, I get zero. And coincidentally, when I add those, I get zero. So that becomes my bottom row. And we already mentioned that once you have the two zeros there, right, you can't go any further because there's no reciprocal of zero to turn this guy into a one, which is the my next step. So we're going to change this back into equations. So this is one X, a positive five halves Y equal to negative seven over two. Here, you have no X's, no Y's equal to zero. So again, if you have nothing on the left, you have to put a zero. Now this is not a contradiction. This is what you call an identity. When you have one side equal to the other side, and that's a true statement. It's called identity, okay? Because they actually do equal, right? Um, when this happens, that means that there are infinitely many solutions, okay? Infinitely many. Graphically, ultimately what that means is that these are the same line. So if you've got one going this way, the other one lies right on top of that, okay? And so while there are infinitely many solutions, it doesn't mean that anything is a solution or that everything is a solution because there are only an infinite number of points on this line because it does go forever that way and forever that way. So there are infinite number of points on this line but for instance a point over here is not a solution a point over here is not a solution a point right there is not a solution so even though there are an infinite number of solutions how do I know what those are exactly okay this is where it tells you to write the solution set with y arbitrary what that means is that you want all of your answers to have a Y in them. How do we do that? First, you say Y is arbitrary. What that means is that Y will just be Y, okay? It's not gonna change. Then for to find X, you're gonna have to say isolate X. So in this case, I'm going to take this equation that I have there and I'm going to isolate the x. So I'm going to minus 5 halves y from both sides. And what do I end up with? I end up with x equal to minus 5 halves y minus 7 halves. Now that I have x solved for that, instead of writing my point as x comma y, I'm not going to use x, but instead I'm going to use what x is equivalent to. So it will become negative 5 halves y minus 7 halves, but the y will stay the y. And this is what they want. Sometimes they may just ask you for the equation of x, but most times they're going to ask you for the problem in point form. So everything is a solution, but or not everything is a solution. There are infinitely many solutions, but those solutions depend on satisfying this equation. Essentially, this is the equation to this line here. Okay? So, they're only are satisfied, satisfied on along that line. Okay. So now, what we want to do is just kind of summarize everything. So it says, when a matrix method is used to solve the system, um, the resulting matrix is written in diagonal form. There are three possible cases. That if the number of rows and non-zero elements to the left of the vertical line um, 
is equal to the number of variables in the system, then the system has one solution. So this is basically the case of when you get this and then something else over there. Okay. Now, this one says if one of the rows has this form, where you may have gotten it down to this, but then you've got 0, 0, and some other number here, where that number is not 0. In that case, the system has no solution. And then the last case is if you end up with all zeros down here, then your system has infinitely many solutions. Um, and there are infinitely many solutions which can be written in terms of just one arbitrary variable. Um, now here's an example that we've got to cover, okay? So it's a word problem, so we've got to change this word problem into equations, then we've got to change the equations into the matrix, and then we've got to solve the matrix, and then we can tell them the answers, right? So it says here, if a building contractor hires five day laborers and one concrete finisher, his payroll for the day is $960. If he hires one day labor and four concrete finishers, his daily cost is $838. Find the daily wage for each type of worker, solve the system using matrices. So how do you figure out how much you pay someone? You always take their um, wage, right, times the number of hours or the job, the people, right? In this case, I don't think we know how many hours they worked, we just know how many people are working. So let's let X equal the day laborers, and we'll let Y equal the concrete finishers, okay? So we're gonna set this up. So a building has five of the laborers, so five laborers, day laborers, times however much those day laborers make. We don't know what those wages are. That's what we're trying to figure out, okay? But that same day, I also have one concrete finisher that I gotta pay out. And the payroll for that day will end up being $960. Now the next sentence says we hire one day labor plus four concrete finishers and we pay out $838. So we need to figure out how much each of these workers is making. How much is each day laborer making and how much is each concrete finisher making per day. Now, this is my system. How do I write that as in a matrix? It would be five, one, nine, sixty, one, for 838. So then let's go through our process. First we turn this into a 1. We're going to do 1 fifth times row, times row 1 to give us our new row 1. So we get 1, 1 fifth, and I do not know what 1 fifth times 960 is. It is 192. And then row two staying the same. Now we gotta turn this into a zero. So we only need the opposite. So negative one times row one plus row two. So we get negative one, negative one fifth, negative one ninety two. And I get zero. Let me see. Negative one fifth plus four is 19 over 5 and negative 192 plus 838 is 4 6 so we get 0 19 over 5 and 6 4 6 top row stays the same now we're going to change this guy into a 1 by using the reciprocal so 5 over 19 same sign times row 2 to get me my new row 2. So row 1 is going to stay the same. Um, this times 0 is 0. The reciprocals together is going to make me 1. 
But what about 5 over 19 times 646? That actually is 170. Now the last thing is to turn this guy into a zero. So to do that, I need negative one-fifth. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do negative one-fifth times this guy. And I can add it to the positive one-fifth. And then I get a new row one. So bottom row times negative one-fifth is zero, negative one-fifth, and negative something or another, negative 34, then one, one-fifth, 192. So we get one, zero, um, negative 34 plus 192 is 158. And so that replaces row one. And so now we have the diagonal matrix over here. So we could put this into equations. So 1x, no y's equals 158. No x's, 1y equals 170. And remember what x represents. X represents the day laborer wage and Y represents the concrete finisher wage. So when the, uh, my math lab has the blanks here, it says the daily wage for day labor is what? That's where you're going to put in the 158 and then you're going to put in the 170. And that's the end of this section. So this section did take about three videos. Um, but not too bad. I was honestly expecting it to take a lot longer. So this is good. Um, once you finish this, you need to finish all the homework. Then you need to go in and start working on your review for the test. Um, and then you take your test. Okay, so that's the goal for this week is to get through all the homework assignments, all the lecture videos, all the homework assignments, then all the review, then the test, and then you can move into this material for week two.